Yeah, hi, morning, folks. Uh, quick video for you. Um, we're going to do a crypto video. Um, we saw last night uh, 100 buyers here. So I obviously took that because we were allowed up here with these numbers to take that only a few some were selling and some were buying so we could see up and down but mainly up I'm thinking at the moment um, so we saw the hundred buyers we witnessed that on CAD yesterday that we have to have bought uh, and we did and uh, we'll go and have a look at that after but uh, in this example what we're doing is Litecoin today and NEO today also because we saw 100 buyers. Um, we'll go over here. Here we go. Um, OMG, same thing last night. Uh, it did just show 100 to 8 day, but it wasn't holding. So you've got to see it really hold for a significant period of time before you know they mean they mean business. Because um, it just bit flicking may not change the bottom line, um, especially if everything else is, is weak. But in this case, I think we'll be all right. Um, now, this has showed us, me, given me a, 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 an idea to do a video on the indexes in, in terms of when looking at them from a crypto perspective, because there is no individual index on the crypto um, game. So, how do we get around this? Well, it's quite simple how we get around this. We can see the same thing. We just have to remember what we're looking at. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to explain it well, but I'll try. Um, LTC 95, OMG 90, ETH 94, Zcash 78. So Zcash is the weakest currently. And Litecoin is the strongest, but let's try to find something better. So we know Litecoin is the strongest. Ah, here we go. XRP 49. So uh, XRP LTC short would be great, right? But they don't offer us that yet. They will be later mixing these up and there'll be a whole a whole new range of them in here. Uh, but for now, we have to work with what we've got. So the only other ones they offer us is ETH BTC, XMR BTC, and LTC BTC. So BTC is 85. XRP is 49. So we could sell XRP and buy BTC just by looking at it this way. Um, we need to put this number in here 85, one second. So we'll pull that chart up and we'll take a look at that and then we'll see what's if we saw the same thing in currencies last week and it would give us a really easy trade it's super easy to take those trades because you're not relying on getting the entire um, dominating currency correct you're just playing two middle guys off one another uh, or you can um, what are we here 87 so let's take a look at XRP BTC chart. Uh, 
Uh, no, hang on. Where is it? It's XMR BTC. XMR is 83. BTC is not 87. It's not good enough, that. Um, let's find something better. ETC, ETH, BTC. ETH is 96 and BTC is 87. So how about that? It's not going to pay a lot, but you'll see that that trade should be going up. ETH, BTC. File, new child. Here it is. Go from the four hour chart. There we go. What are we seeing here? What we're seeing is ETH is 96 and BTC is 87. So ETH, BTC should go up, grind up, not too fast. But at the moment, it will go like that. Um, if there was more numbers in it, we would take a buy. But in this case, this is not much point. But we'll we'll just do this for the purpose of this video, and we'll mark a green line from there, and we're anticipating up until these numbers change. Okay, so we'll put that in. Ninety five, eighty six at the time of this. Um, and here it says ninety one, but you, if you're just trading it like this, or reading these numbers, you, you really don't have a, an idea of what they, they're telling you. So if you look into it with more detail like this, then you'll get an idea of what these these are really about. Um, but that's what we're going to anticipate, some sort of slow grind at higher. Let's go over to the currencies. Um, hopefully everyone's got in the numbers here. Just take a look at them again. Um, and here's the numbers. And these are what I have. This one is an 85, 92. This is everything I've written down. I don't, I don't, like I told you, keep super on top of this during the week. Let's see. And then we'll move it over. Sorry, put that back there. Okay, that's what we have. This is EOS 97. There's some numbers yesterday, 95. But yeah, hopefully they'll match up with what you guys have. All right, so let's go and check out the currencies. do a quick review on last week. Hang on, profile's changing one second. Oh, 
while this is happening, <clears throat> I'll show you guys this. Um, I wanted to show you something. This is the Mason symbol. And this is a 90 degree angled fixed ruler, right? Fixed. It doesn't move. You can't move that. It's impossible. Okay. But uh, above it is the one that adjusts. I forget the name of it. Um, but it adjusts. So, which means above is dynamic. And it's, look, it's above. It's on top of the fixed earth. And what's above in the sky is dynamic movements. And that's why you have to be dynamic with trading. Because it just adjusts all the time. You can't stick to it. Stick to exactly one fixed lot size or one fixed target or stop. You, you've got to adjust for this um, because it's dynamic. And they're telling, you us, telling us right here. Um, also, this today is the uh, the uh, end of uh, Shishan Purim, which means uh, many things. Um, but these guys, these guys today may go into here. Uh, symbolically uh, on the news we may be hearing this type of talk but they won't tell you but they just they'll they'll make references to to it somehow um, trying to build up uh, fear um, for whatever event is coming next fake tsunami fake nuke fake cyber attack whatever they're going to pull off to bring in the central bank digital currencies um and that is sh sh any time from today is what we're expecting in into the summer so um get ready for that uh, but really uh, none of it's real so don't even be uh, be afraid uh, anyway the currencies are up now All right, um, those are the numbers. Um, like we said on Thursday, to possibly just abort and reset and come back and make a new plan for next week because we did too much buying on CAD, sent it, sent it up, and um, that meant that Eurocat got destroyed, so we had to abort that idea. Even though Euro was strong, uh, it, it, where was it here? There, it took out the low. So we originally had that buy. I got out somewhere here, then made the video after I saw that hundreds and look. Uh, so even with the strong Euro, it still wasn't able to compete with Canada. Um, and you can see right here, I mean, we knew they were building the numbers, but overall it was still the bottom line was 61, whereas CAD was 89. So all that week was really telling us to be short if we look at it from the perspective like I just showed you with the crypto. Um, but really, with Euro... It's, it's it could be becoming the dominating currency, but we don't know yet. I mean, we saw the hugest numbers change and in pounds, so that's what I'm uh, I'm expecting. But if we've got strong Canada and strong Aussie and New Zealand um, and strong uh, LFX, then how would pound and euro then become dominator? That they, they can't because these guys are going to have to show that too. You can't have all of the currencies strong, right? It's 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 just not going to work that way. It's like a it's like a pendulum. It's like a seesaw. So, somewhere there's a, there's a line in the middle. Um, and right now, the absolute strongest is LFX, or weakest is yen. Then next would be CAD. 
uh, and or Aussie slash New Zealand, you know, how do we know that? Well, the correlation can tell us. We know that New Zealand is, at the, is strong. We know that Aussie is strong. Relative, we know that pound is weak. Euro is in the middle. Um, Swiss is weak. Even though recently it's been strong, it's still weak relative to Aussie and New Zealand. Uh, LFX is strong. So you've got three, right? Three strong, two weak, one middle, uh, CAD strong so versus four strong, and then dollar is simply in a pullback um, at the moment, I think. So we'll look here for a reduction in uh, shorts and some big hundred buyers on Friday, on, on Monday, Sunday. That's what I think we're going to get. And then dollar will suck back up to, uh, or CAD will suck dollar back up. And then pound and euro will collapse uh, one more time. And then we'll start the drama again. I think that's how this is going to go down now. Um, so let's try and do some easy ones next week. We know pound is weak. And we know that um, dollar is weaker. So that should have meant the pound dollar was going up for the week. And I believe it was. Because we did that trade. Right, it went up all week. So if we see these numbers change around and this start to go back up there so high, biggest heavier sellers on pound and more greens on dollar then we know what's happening we know this is going to come back down um, and then maybe get to the low or whatever I don't know how it's going to work out but we'll see we'll just watch um, and, and we just hold until the numbers tell us otherwise and or this type of scenario where you get this in, in incident where really retail people would be looking at dollar as weak right now but it's not it's not weak because we know that CAD is strong and it's tied to CAD so it's gonna have to suck back up plus all of this other stuff I just described the strong dollar strong New Zealand um, and LFX. Um, let's see another one that we could have done last week. We knew we were seeing. Um, <clears throat> um, was there any time when we got caught on the Aussie when we thought it was really going to break down? Um, not really, because we got here and then uh, it was not really. I mean, this chart here would have stopped you getting screwed too much there. But let's just say you did. Look, minus 56 at this point, and then your other trade would have been, let's say, uh, LFX, look, 74. So that's obviously a buy um, Aussie. Um, uh, no, you wouldn't have bought because of Aussie being red. How would we have done this then? Uh, where we would have just, where we they will find something where we would have deliberately been wrong and see if it would have still screwed us. Um, so we want to think, sell Aussie, and what would we have gone against at that time? Yeah, okay. LFX, let's try it, see what would have happened. Oh, hang on. Just use this chart. Okay. Where's the Aussie again? Here it is. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. 
so here we're thinking down right the numbers would have told us to sell Aussie and buy uh, and sell uh, and, and buy yeah, yeah so we would have gone down like this and it never happened how would we have known to to abort well we would have seen a 12 here at this part somewhere here which is green and at the same time we just said no we would have yeah no, you got to be careful it doesn't it looks like you uh maybe in Aussie New Zealand would have helped us yeah this was probably green right yeah maybe we'd have to check here yeah, I don't know I'll have to come up with something a way of doing this but I think there's a there's an easy uh <clears throat> an easy trade which you can take if you don't know what the dominator is that's what I'm getting at here and it probably starts I think the easiest way to do it is to follow this uh, the real true strength which the correlation is going to show us because um, if we do that then we'll follow a mechanical rule which is okay um, okay as long as we stick to the same thing but then just adjust our targets uh, and scenarios of exiting dynamically because they tell us to um, anyway thanks a lot I think that'll be it for now I'll do another video on uh, on Monday